Willie Ames is a name that may ring a bell for people who grew up in the 70s and 80s. The former child actor and TV star landed his first acting job at age 11 and went on to have a successful career starring in hit shows like Eight is Enough and Charles in Charge. From his early success to his struggles with addiction and his inspiring recovery, join Facts First as we present Willie Ames is 62, look at him now after he lost all his money. Acting Life Willie Ames, the versatile act, was born on July 15, 1960 in California. Even as a child, he was drawn to the allure of the stage and began his acting career at a young age. He was featured in a bunch of popular TV shows of the era, including Adam-12, The Wonderful World of Disney, and Gunsmoke. He left an indelible mark with his acting prowess in shows like Wait Till Your Father Gets Home and The Odd Couple. At age 15, Ames landed a major role in The Swiss Family Robinson as Fred Robinson. He appeared in 20 episodes, showcasing his talent. Nonetheless, it was his portrayal of Tommy Bradford in Eight is Enough that marked a turning point in his career. He starred in this role from 1977 to 81, appearing in 111 episodes. He then made his foray into the film industry. In 1979, he made his debut with the role of Kenny Stevens in Scavenger Hunt. He followed it up with notable performances in movies like Paradise, where he played David, and Zapped, where he played Peyton Nichols. He also appeared in other films like Goma 2 and Cut and Run, which further showcased his acting range. Following the end of Eight is Enough, Ames continued to make appearances on TV shows throughout the 80s. He lent his voice to the character of Hank the Ranger in Dungeons and Dragons and made various guest appearances. During this period, his most distinguished role was that of Buddy Lembeck on the hit show Charles in Charge. Ames played the character with such finesse he's still remembered for it today. He was featured in 126 episodes of the show, which aired between 1984 and 1990. After that show ended, he briefly hosted the game show The Krypton Factor. Ames had the lead role of Miles Peterson and Bible Man in the direct-to-video series Bible Man. The series, which ran for 23 episodes from 1995 to 03, saw Ames take on multiple roles and direct 11 episodes. Following the conclusion of Bible Man, he wrote and directed the direct-to-DVD film The Missy Files, but he decided to take a break from his career to spend more time with family. As a result, he appeared in only direct-to-video productions between 1990 and 2003. Other Gigs Willie Ames made a brief return to the world of television in 2005 in the reality series Celebrity Fit Club for eight episodes. He made a comeback in 2008 for the show's spin-off, Celebrity Fit Club Boot Camp, which also ran for eight episodes. He lent his voice to narrate 13 episodes of Bug Time Adventures and appeared as himself in the first season of Macmillan River Adventures. After this short stint on television, Ames took another break from acting and embarked on a completely different career path. He became a six-star cruise director and traveled to over 127 countries on different cruise ships. This was a significant departure from his previous work, but he relished the experience. Ames worked for Oceana Cruise Lines on two ships, Marina and MS Nautica, where he served not only as a director, but also performed as a singer twice a week. In the later stages of his career as a cruise director, Ames maintained his association with Regent Seven Seas, working on both the Mariner and Voyager vessels. He also trained to become a licensed financial advisor. His passion for helping others was evident, and he always looked for ways to make a positive impact. Hard Times and Battling Homelessness Despite his success in the entertainment industry, Willie Ames was not immune to the challenges that come with fame. In an interview, Ames spoke candidly about his struggles with drug addiction, which began to worsen when he turned 18 and moved into his own apartment. He admitted to using drugs every day of the week, which took a toll on his finances, career, and overall well-being. However, Ames had a moment of clarity in 1984 after watching the movie Wired, which depicted John Belushi's death from a drug overdose. This served as a wake-up call, and he enrolled in the 12-step program to help him overcome his addiction. He also turned to religion for support. Perhaps the most significant turning point in his life was meeting his second wife, Malo McCaslin. 
Ames also opened up about experiencing financial ruin after his acting career. Despite earning over a million dollars a year, he found himself suddenly without a job, bank account, wife, or child. He realized he had hit rock bottom and needed to sell his property to make ends meet. In March of 2009, he organized a garage sale in his Kansas home, hoping to raise cash. He even signed autographs for patrons and haggled with prospective buyers. But the media was quick to portray the event as confirmation of his downfall, and a production company even recorded it for a TV show. Not too long after that, he became virtually homeless, sleeping in parking garages or the park when he couldn't stay with friends. But he was determined to work hard to rebuild his life. After hitting rock bottom, Willie Ames began to reflect on the choices that led to his downfall. He acknowledged his risky behavior not only caused financial troubles, but also put his marriage in jeopardy. For the first time in 25 years, he found himself alone and realized he had played a significant role in creating that situation. Ames set out to figure out what he needed to do to get back on track. He landed a job installing satellite systems, which provided a sense of purpose. As his earnings began to meet his financial obligations, he was able to get an apartment and take care of his basic needs. Reading also played a significant role in his recovery. It helped him regain his self-esteem and gave him the motivation to keep pushing forward. Rumors about suicide During this difficult time, rumors circulated that Willie Ames had attempted suicide. But Ames revealed he did not want to read any more bad publicity during that period of his life. While some of the rumors were partially accurate, he clarified some details were not entirely true. He admitted to being depressed and taking two high doses of antidepressants, but at some point he stopped taking the medication, which resulted in withdrawal symptoms that took a toll on his mental health. To cope with the urge to take antidepressants, he resorted to drinking and making poor decisions. Despite his struggles, he denied attempting suicide. Returning to Film after spending several years away from the entertainment industry, Willie Ames made a triumphant return to the big screen in 2015. He decided to take up acting and filmmaking once again and made a comeback with a Hallmark movie titled Harvest Moon playing William Stone. The next year, he appeared as Kyle in another Hallmark movie called Dater's Handbook before playing Vernon Hollis in his third Hallmark movie, Every Christmas Has a Story, in 2016. He also briefly played Principal Reed in two episodes of Date My Dad in 2017. In 2019, he took on the role of Martin Thomas in the Hallmark movie Love on the Menu and was the subject of a documentary called One Life, No Regrets. Love Life His love life has been nothing short of eventful with three marriages and several children. His first marriage to Victoria Weatherman ended in 1984, after which they had a son. His second marriage to Malo McCaslin brought forth a daughter, Harley Jean Upton. Despite these setbacks, Ames has moved on and found happiness with his third wife, actress Winnie Hung, whom he married in 2014. Now it's time to hear from you. What do you think of Willie Ames' journey? Do you remember him from back in the day? Let us know in the comments section below.